Hey everybody, Barry here again. This is gonna be a pretty quick one because I'm taking a break for today. I just wanted to have a look at this steering shaft. So what I need to do is measure the length that I'm gonna need. And what I have is the old steering shaft here and I know this one was two or three inches too short with our slip yoke fully extended. And I think there's five inches of travel on the slip yoke. So if I could get it, even say four inches longer than this, this one will be fully collapsed because it doesn't need to slip because it's a slip yoke in the van, then I'd be in the right area. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off and take out <laughs> a bit. <laughs> I'll do some measuring and then I'll confirm. I think what I'm gonna do is cut off this one right behind this indent here because obviously I won't be able to put a piece of pipe in there to sleeve it. So I'll cut it off right here and probably go ahead and cut it off right here also to eliminate these two dimples. That way I got a couple inches here that I can sleeve, inch and a half here that I can sleeve, and whatever else I need to take off, I can take off up here. And hopefully I'll be in the right area. We're getting closer. I got this one here cut off, cleaned up. You can see that it's just a hollow pipe. It's about 16th of an inch or so. I should be able to sleeve that fine. Something that I have to take note of, which would mess up the alignment big time, is which way this end and this end are aligned. If these are aligned incorrectly, say 90 degrees off, then my steering wheel, instead of being top up here, would be over here. And that would be not ideal. And there's lots here. There's piles of room here to put a sleeve in. We got about an inch and a quarter here. If I do need to snick a half an inch off of this or even a little bit more, I certainly can. And when I put my sleeve in, I'll turn up the heat on the welder so it welds this and the sleeve at the same time. It's gonna be quite strong. If I feel the need, maybe I'll drill two holes in, you know, in opposite sides on here and here and plug weld it so that it's welded to the sleeve also. So I went up to one of the local places here called Concrete Concepts. They got a bunch of random stuff like this, which is like a hydraulic hose joiner or something like that, I guess. And I found that it fits like a glove inside this pipe. And it's thicker than the actual material up here, so it'll weld perfect. It's zinc coated, so it won't rust. And I just gotta notch it or cut it off a little bit shorter to go in this one. But I think it's gonna work perfect. I'm gonna cut this off, leave inch and a half here, go a little extra just to be sure. And if I have to cut any more off, I'll cut it off here. If it's too short, it's not a big deal because it'll just expand anyway. So no, no big deal there. Okay, all of our parts are here. Here's the steering shaft that I cut off with the end that I cut about six inches off of. Here's our original Dodge steering shaft. So if we lay this one out here like that. And I also cut off this bushing because it was a bit too long. We put all this together. Now actually, that can be shorter there. So in reality, we're five inches longer, actually. So we do have a little bit of in and out room. If it is too short, not a big deal, because we have that much slip. It's gonna be fine. I would like to have it so this doesn't collapse at all, because that way we'll use the factory van slip yoke. I got a couple things I gotta try and consider that may cause hiccups. This is gonna be a three joint. Oh, here we go. This is gonna be a three joint steering shaft now. Meaning there's one here, there's one at the top, then there's one at the top of the steering column. So is this gonna give me issues? I haven't dealt with this something like this before. So I'm not sure. This side is hooked up. And I went in under and hooked up this side. I can see here that it's pretty much the perfect length. We've got at least an inch 
inch and a quarter of slip goes down here the brake pedal avoids it doesn't hit it so it seems like we're in the right ballpark anyway i think i'm going to cut off another half inch or so here just to get some more slip up top just in case there is a collision or anything like that that it doesn't max out the slip yoke I got a couple pretty good hot tacks put on there. So let's try it and see if we have any binding or any steering issues. I didn't really mean to skip anything, but I had to go trim in a little bit. But got the steering shaft down over the rack, bolted on nice and solid. This is gonna be uh, it's gonna be really cool, assuming these three U joints don't give us any issues. It may seem backwards that I'm doing the steering shaft first before I mount the rack but I want to have the steering shaft done, hooked up to the column, just to make sure it doesn't get too close to the brake pedal or doesn't hit the floor or anything like that. And then when I get those adjustments done that I need to do, then I'll mount the rack. Because I do have some forward and back room where I can mount the rack, because either way, I gotta get longer tie rods. So uh, I figured I'd do this part first, have that all nailed down, and then make up my tabs to mount the rack. See if we can get this rack in place. As much as it sucks, I do have issues. Let's check it out. Let me turn this light on. Oops, there we go. So, I am gonna need some sort of a steady bearing to make this work because we can see that when I turn the steering wheel, everything moves. It's like having a two-piece drive shaft with three U-joints on it. You need something to locate that second U-joint. And I don't have that here. So, uh, turn this light off. Looks like I'm either gonna have to come up with a sort of an idler bearing and mount that, or I could go back to the original plan that I was thinking about doing and just extend this one. Cut it, big heavy sleeve, put it in there, weld it, three inches, four inches longer, whatever it needs to be. And I was kind of hoping this was gonna be easier, but I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna work because I have done two joint and one joint steering shaft with rag joints before, but I haven't done a three. So this has definitely been a learning experience. <laughs> now you may have noticed that I haven't edited this out. Uh, it's a bit of a blunder. I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, but I don't like to uh, delete mistakes and look like I did it right the first time and all that I'm not into that so hopefully somebody else can learn from what I just did and either improve on what I did or maybe come up with a much better solution and if you did or if you have more advice for me just comment I'm always open to uh, opinions and you know a little bit of criticism or help so I really appreciate it I'm not quite sure if this is the right size yet, but this is one of the old four link bars off the rat rod. And I'm gonna cut this off, measure the inside diameter, see if it's close to this, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. We seem to have something. This is wicked. It's like the perfect length. I kinda wish I hadn't wasted my time doing that whole thing, but hey, I think I might have a steering shaft for the rat rod now. This is perfect. This is gonna be great. It's very thick. This is a Schedule 40 pipe. It's like twice as thick as what this was. Actually, I have a piece right here. Bang. Look at the difference. So, no safety concerns whatsoever. This was a factory steering column off of a Ford pickup, and this is how thin it was. So, I think we're gonna be perfectly fine here. Now, I know you guys didn't follow me to just to watch me trip over myself and do stuff three, four times, but I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Let's get this uh, sleeve here knocked off, and I think I'm just going to cut it directly in the middle. So that way our stress is put over, say, eight inches of pipe, 
rather than right down here at the end or something like that. I always like to cut in the middle. Well, I took this thing out of the floor. So we got lots of room now to see if we can get the steering shaft to work. like a uh, half inch from the floor ish up there I think lots of room here everything looks pretty well lined up we could probably come this way a little bit actually cool and I'll lean it back as far as I can this way to get these lines away from the oil pan because the more I tilt forward the more they stick up that'll give me a lot of room because I don't have much room between here and the bottom of the cowl if I have to trim the cowl I will but I don't really have room because this wiper motor is here. So I'd like to have the engine tucked right up and under here. You'll have to bear with me because it's very tight down here. But I want to show you the reason, first off, that I didn't do the rack first. Because if I tilted the rack all the way back like I was talking about, so it's leaned in and hooked this up, the first thing I would hit is my brake pad. Like it would come down and hit off the steering shaft. So it looks like I'm gonna have to tilt it all the way up and have my steering shaft come down to meet it, which is not bad because it's only a couple inches short. I'll probably only have to put in three inches and I'll have a pile of room then away from my brake pedal and stuff. This is gonna be pretty much fully adjustable because what I'm gonna do is cut it, stick this end up into the column, this end onto the rack, and then measure from this tapered spot here up to this tapered spot and leave probably a half inch for welding on both sides. And then I can use a sleeve that's the complete length of this. That'll give us lots of uh, lots of metal here so that we don't have any torsional load on it. So there's no chance of it bending and stuff because the sleeve is only over the cut bit an inch, that kind of thing, right? So let's do that. This is my last chance. If I mess this one up, you're going in the crusher. Again, remember the orientation. I forgot to mark it before I cut it, and then I had to use this one here as a guide. So I got lots and lots and lots of marks put on this now so I don't mess it up again. I did the best measurement I could. And we can see here, we got our piece that's cut off. The one that's in here is still ah, very hot. So it's only like two and a half inches longer. But I measured and eight inches is how much sleeve I'm gonna use. That should get me right up around this taper here. And the same on the other end, if I have to cut an inch off, not a big deal. And what I'm going to do, now that I know this is going to work, everything there is going to be fine, I'm going to just sleeve this, have it all held in place, and go ahead and make up the mounting brackets for the rack. That way I can mount the rack solid. After I have that done, that's when I'll weld the steering shaft completely and make sure there's no binding and stuff like that in it. Hey, hey, would you look at that? Everything looks good here. Sleeve is not too long. Let's get it around this big hunk of pole. Ow. Yeah. And we're all good up here too. Lots of slip yoke here. I'm a lot more comfortable with having like four inches of travel than just a couple. And we can see lots of room for our brake pedal. Now, of course, I'm just holding this and stuff, but and the reason this is all moving is because I'm moving the whole rack. It's not even bolted in yet, which is what I'm about to go do. This should actually be relatively quick. All I got to do is make tabs for this bolt hole and that bolt hole and basically triangulate them between the top of the cradle here and the cross member that I made. Now, obviously, you've noticed that I haven't finished welded anything. I don't like to get ahead of myself and finish weld everything and be like, oh no, something's a half inch off. I'm gonna slice it all up again. So a few good heavy tacks and maybe a couple of beads holds everything in place until I'm done. When I have the steering system and the rack and the column and all this cradle cut out and stuff, when that's all done and I know everything fits, I'll solid weld the works of it.
the rack mounts are made. Of course, they're only tacked. Still gotta clean it up and get it ready. But this is where the rack is gonna sit. Now, obviously I'm not gonna leave it just like this because it's kind of springy. I'll make brackets to come down here and weld solid to this and that'll be triangulated. Same thing as over here. I've got the rack completely centered with the old rack holes. I use a square, come across here and then come down and center the rack where it needed to be. Steering shaft still fits perfect. So let's go ahead and make some brackets and weld them up solid. Loud right here now because the fan is on because everything's all welding smoke but everything's welded up solid here for the rack looks really good everything's good i got ample space between the plates here and my uh, rack bellows the steering shaft goes up here fine i'm going to bolt this in when it cools down get it nice and solid and then go ahead and get the steering shaft figured out Now this isn't permanent installation. I am gonna to have to take it off again because I need to do my steering shaft, weld that up. Also, I'm gonna take the cradle out after I cut, after, well, after I got the whole center of this, I'm gonna take it out, finish weld everything. And I need to also brace the inside of this here with some plate metal and stuff. Although it's not going to bear any weight, the engine's gonna be plated onto this here. This is just, solely for the rack so i can make lots of room for transmission right here so what we have here is our steering shaft going up to the shaft in the floor and if i bring it down all the way that means that up here our slip yoke is completely extended all the way and there's no give for the body to separate from the frame this way so that it could potentially if there's enough give in these rubbers it could break the rack or break the mount so what I'm gonna do is leave about maybe a half inch on this end gap and then a half inch up top. That way I know that I have potentially a half an inch or so of travel and it'll sort of float there and it won't be maxed at all. Now that we have a plan, it can go and weld up the steering shaft, weld tack up and then test it, make sure everything's good, make sure we got no binding, steering wheel straight, all that, and then I'll finish welding. Now we can see that everything is straight. I've got some room left for some extension and collapse. Let's go ahead and do some tacking. This is exciting. That was hot too. There we go. under again and we can see that we've got lots of space between the floor this rubber gasket thing here there we go i can get my hand right down between that now of course it does move a little bit because i don't have any bolts in it yet like there's no bolt in here or down bottom lots of room for the brake pedal no problem there Let's see what we got sweet now there's no fluid in it everything's knocking around so you can hear some crunching but that is perfect i like where everything sits here i'm gonna go ahead and weld this up I just finished welding this, but it's, so it's extremely hot. But I have no doubts whatsoever 
that this is going to be strong enough. Welded the whole way around here and then drilled and plug welded but an inch and a half up. Everything's nice and aligned. I'm really, really excited that this is actually working. Rack is mounted, steering shaft is done. Now I can start at the cradle. Now that I got the steering shaft done, the rack is mounted, I'm gonna pull it all apart, pull the cradle off, lay it on the bench and gut it. It's finally time to cut it all the nonsense in here. That's gonna make way for our transmission. I said it before, uh, I guess I'll say it again, just in case you're just catching up. This uh, cradle, I'm gutting the back of it because it's not gonna be holding anything but the rack and it doesn't need to be as big and clunky as it is. Mainly because my transmission has to sit right where the rack is. The oil pan is coming off of it, making my own, because I'm hoping the rack is gonna sit pretty much right and under right here, and my sump is gonna be forward. Okay, remember it's taken out. I'll come up with a plan for getting as much metal out of here as I can get. The engine itself at the widest point is 16 inches. That would be from here to here. So we don't have to take a whole lot, but I'd rather go as much as I can. I'd like to leave probably two, two and a half inches on the outer edges. That way there's lots of material and it'll be boxed in anyway. I think I might take it out probably to this edge here because it's a nice straight edge. And well, I'd say probably the same thing here. That'll give me a good even width and then come up to the back of this bracket here, go across and that'll take out a real nice chunk for us. That's gotta be the hardest that I've worked on this thing so far. But it's cut out. Looks really good. This here was giving me a lot of trouble cutting this out. And here, I had to use a saws on bent blade pieces, but that's it. So basically what I gotta do is make a plate to go across here now, across here and here. Weld all that in, it'll be nice and strong. We got lots of mounting points. One right at the rear of the control arm, one directly at the front of the control arm. Nice beefy cross member. Same over here. And our rack is mounted at the front. Good stuff. Now before I do sheet metal work on this thing, getting those holes filled in, I'm gonna bolt the cross member up, get the engine and transmission put together, and lay this thing down on the ground, see what kind of clearance we got. Make sure that this is gonna be enough. I'm sure it's gonna be wide enough because it's 20 inches wide, our engine is 16. I just wanna make sure that front to back here, I don't have to take any more out, which uh, doesn't really matter if I take another inch or so, but it's nice to have this beefy up here right behind the rack and all that stuff. So I'm gonna leave that much for now. But let's get this put in. See if we can get our engine mounted. Look how well this thing fits. It's basically up against the firewall. It's behind the rack, or the flywheel is anyway. And it seems like the flywheel is behind the cradle. It's a very good sign. Lots of space between the power steering lines and the oil pan. Now as for the transmission, there's not a whole lot of room for the firewall. 
but it looks like the engine or the transmission is going to clear this cradle anyway. So I might be able to tip the engine back if I need to. Lots of room for the steering shaft to go by the block and the transmission. No issues there. So I've got to figure something out. Uh, the engine is sitting way too high and it's going to go directly through the stone go and it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to lower the K-member like a lot. And I'm kind of scared that it's going to mess with the ride height. Because right now as it sits, the crank center line is level with the floor which means the output shaft on the transmission is going to be level with the floor. It's going to be tight. So I got to either tip the engine back a lot to get the, the tail shaft down. And it's not really a big deal because all I have to do really is tip the drive shaft or the rear end up. So it's on the same linear plane as the engine. As long as it's not over like 12, 13 degrees because then you don't start vibrating but then it still is going to drive the drive shaft up closer to the floor so i got a lot of problems to try and resolve so i think i figured it out i got the engine out of it i'll cut out as much of this as i can so i can get the engine ahead a little bit my rack is still very high obviously i can't get it any lower because the control arm mounts are there but I can move the whole thing down. So that's my next step. I'll probably put a two or three inch spacer between these and put longer bolts in there. Well, this thing is giving me a really hard time. Uh, Any way that I put it, I have not enough room. If I put the engine where it wants to sit above the cradle in the rack, the drive shaft will go directly through the stone go. If I drop everything, I can drop the rack four or five inches. If I bring it down that low, the engine is basically sitting on the ground. And that's not gonna work. I could tip the engine and transmission back, but it would be quite an angle, leading me to the possibility of using a two-piece drive shaft with a steady bearing, but with the power I'm putting down, it wouldn't be long blowing it up. Decisions, what to do. So anyway, uh, it's been a pretty long day. I've been here for like eight or nine hours now so far doing this myself and lifting stuff around this, uh, uh, I'm rotten. So I'm gonna go home and do some pondering, see what Cass has to say about it all. And uh, that's pretty much gonna do it. This is a long video. Uh, I I love you if you got to the end. <laughs> Thanks for watching. So yeah, um, we'll come up with a plan. Might take a couple of days to get my head around it, but we'll be back and we'll get it done. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good night.